Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. We pray, O Lord, that you will reign in every heart in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that in every heart, every soul today, the peace of the Lord will be manifest in Jesus' name. O Lord, we are praying that you will steal the stormy sea, so that in every heart and in every family, there will be peace in Jesus' name. We know the devil does not want your people to have peace. But Lord, we pray you'll break the jawbone of the adversary of your people in Jesus' name. Let there be peace. And in the church, let there be peace. In the country, let there be peace. In our places of work, let there be peace. Everywhere your children are, let there be peace in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, the deep desires of your children, as they look up to you today, you will answer our prayers. We will rest in you. And all the storms in every life, you calm, you calm everything in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. We know there will be peace. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We're looking at Psalm 122, verses 6 through to 9. Psalm 122. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy gates, within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee, because of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek thy good. Here you will find that the psalmist is talking about prayer. And he's reaching out a command and exhortation. That we should look at an aspect of prayer. That doesn't only affect the individual or the family or even the church alone. But the community in which we live. You will see from the passage we have read originally. This was a call to the inhabitants of Jerusalem that they will pray for the peace in their city. Actually, it was a call to all the children of Israel that there will be peace in Jerusalem. You will know that among the Hebrew people, whenever they greeted one another, they used a particular word and that was Shalom. And Shalom meant peace. And Jerusalem actually means the city of peace. And every time you call Jerusalem, you are simply saying in the Hebrew tongue, the city of peace. And every time those people greeted themselves, you will say, peace unto you. Peace unto the city. Because they wanted peace. And of course, looking ahead, that was the place where the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, will eventually reign. And he felt that if Christ will be coming, and if Jerusalem, the city of peace, will be the central and capital city, that the people there too should have peace. But they knew that it will not come automatically. Knowing what men are, there is violence in the lives, in the hearts of men. And therefore they said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And it says, they shall prosper that love that city. The prayer is that the prophetic meaning of the name, City of Peace, from where the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, will eventually reign, they wanted that prophecy to be fulfilled. And here in this passage, we also have a call to pray for our own city and to pray for our own country. That's why we're looking at the message today, praying for the peace of our country. Praying. For the peace of our country. There are three things we notice as we have read this passage. Number one, prayer for peace and prosperity. Prayer for peace and prosperity. Number two, prosperity promised to those who pray and seek peace. If we are going to have prosperity, individually and in the family and in the church, we ought to pray and we ought to be seeking peace in our community as well as in the whole country. 
prosperity promised to those who pray and seek peace. Number three, patriotism of praying peaceful people. Patriotism of praying peaceful people. Let's look at these one by one. As we look at the passage before us, we read once again Psalm 1, 2, 2, verses 6 and 7. In verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. If you are living in a place, you have to love that place. Because the peace of that place is your own peace as well. And so you ought to pray, and I ought to pray, and the whole church ought to pray for the peace of the city and of the country in which we live. And it says if we do that, we're showing love to that community and country in which we live. And it says we will prosper. Then it says this is the item of prayer, the request in prayer that we're making. Peace be within thy walls. Jerusalem was a walled city. And they were praying that every corner, every street, every community in that city, that there will be peace within the walls, and then prosperity within thy palaces. That is, in the place where the king was reigning and ruling, there will be no peace there, so they will be taking the right decision, and nothing will disturb the progress, the prosperity, and the peace of the palace as well as the whole city itself. We we'll find that the children of Israel, even when they were not in Jerusalem, and they were carried into captivity, or they were to be carried into captivity, they were given a particular instruction that whenever they got to that place they were going, although it was not their city or country of origin, they must still be praying for the peace and seeking the peace of that place where they were going. Look at Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7. Seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace now we have learned in psalm 122 that they should pray for their native country they should pray for their own fatherland they should pray for jerusalem because it belonged to them but then they were even told your prayer is not going to be limited to jerusalem because that's your own city where you are born your fatherland if you are carried away captive and you happen to be in a foreign land in that foreign land where you are you ought to be praying for that place why because it's as a place as peace you too you will be able to have peace that's telling us for example there may be foreigners and there are there are foreigners who are living in our country nigeria and as long as you are here if there is no peace in the country there will be no peace for you as well that means that even if you are not a Nigerian and you are living in this country, you are being carried to this place, you are working here, you are schooling here, or you are living here, you must be praying for the peace of this country because it is in the peace of this place, you too, you will have peace. And then as we go back to the Psalms, we are learning on what prayer are we praying. We are praying, of course, that there will be peace in this country because this is our country or because we're living in this country and there is if there is no peace it affects everything and everyone so it should be the prayer in every on every mouth it should be the prayer in every family and it should be the prayer in every church that will have peace in our country in Psalm 68 Psalm 68 Bastachi, rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of bulls, with the cows of the people, till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. You see here, we are being told how to really pray. And they knew that in their city, in their country, in their nation, 
there were people that were spearmen, spearmen that uh, the spear was a weapon of war, and they were praying for peace, and they were saying, "No, oh Lord, you know where those people are, who might be conspiring together, and they want disturbance and violence." He said, "Oh Lord, will you not rebuke them? Will you not bring them under conviction?" Will you not show them the importance and how precious souls are so that they will not use their weapons of war to destroy anyone? He said, rebuke the multitude of bulls with the cows of the people. That is, the people that were almost beasts and they are like animals and they do not care what happens to the lives of men. He said, bring them under conviction. Subdue them, overcome them, rebuke them. He said, till everyone will submit himself with the pieces of silver. That is, they will not love so much money so much as to want to destroy the lives of innocent people that have earned their own money. But they will leave the people with their own substance. And these people who are violent, they will submit themselves. Then at last he said, Oh Lord, we want you to do something for us. Drive away and scatter thou the people that delight in war. The people that delight in violence. Scatter them. Don't let them remain in our city or in our country. You will see then that uh, this is an important prayer that we children of God, we ought to be praying. Because if we don't pray, we may discover that the country is run over by people that are violent, by people that do not want peace. And when it is like that, everything is disturbed. Individuals are disturbed, and families are disturbed. That's the reason we ought to be praying. In fact, we children of God, we have the peculiar assignment, responsibility of praying for the peace of our own country. In Isaiah chapter 62, Isaiah chapter 62, look at verse 1. For Zion's sake, when I not hold my peace, I will not hold my peace, that means I will not keep quiet, I will speak out. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as the lamp that burneth. Actually, Jerusalem was the place where the Lord wanted the word uh, from which uh, God wanted the word to be going out. And he said, if there is disturbance or violence, the preaching of the word, the preaching of the word of God, that shall be going forth as light from that central city, will not be possible because of that, because of Zion's Zion, I will not hold my peace. And because of that Jerusalem, I will not rest. I'll keep on praying okay. until righteousness from that place will go forth as the brightness of uh, the morning sun. And then salvation from that place will be as a lamp that burneth, so that if there is peace, we'll be able to carry on the gospel work, and then other people, even far away people, they'll be able to hear the word of the Lord. In verse 6, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest, till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You will then that uh, peace is very important, and it is uh, desired, and it is to be prayed for, because strife and violence are deadly things. Actually, Peace and prosperity go hand in hand, as war, violence, and famine go hand in hand. Peace in the city and peace in the country should be a daily prayer, for in so doing we bring down prosperity upon ourselves. As we go back to Psalm 122, uh, there are some things to notice in Psalm 122. Number one, what we have read there is a command. It says pray for the peace of and a command obedience will release the power of God upon your life, will release the protection, 
the peace, the prosperity of, of the Lord upon you. Number two, it's a privilege as well that you can be counted as, the, as one of the people that will pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That the fulfillment of the prophetic name of Jerusalem will be fulfilled through your prayer was a privilege. Our prayer will bind the adversary and subdue the spirit of violence and unrest. Number three, prayer is our spiritual weapon. That's why it's seen as a people of the world are using their own weapon, their weapon of destruction. Why don't you as a child of God use your own spiritual weapon as well to destroy the weapons of destruction? Number four, that prayer grants us a place with great, great men of the past. A place with Abraham who prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah. It grants us a place with Moses that prayed for the whole nation of the children of Israel. And so you understand that when you pray like that, you are granted a place of authority. It's like you have the key in your hand. The key that opens the door and then we're able to have peace in the city as well as in our country. So that millions of lives will be spared from untimely death and eternal sorrow. When there is peace and people live their normal lives, then nobody will die prematurely. That will give them chance to still hear the message of the gospel and eventually to be saved. Number five, such fervent prayer could grant us a sustained period of peace and security to carry on our legitimate work, our normal work. Didn't you see when, uh, when there was no peace, when there was unrest in the city as well as in the country? Didn't you see that the normal thing we ought to do, we couldn't do? And then when there is peace, we'll be able to carry on our normal worship and then prepare for heaven without disturbance, without distraction.